Hey everybody, this is HD. Welcome back. It's time for game number two between Loner and Marine King. And I did actually go ahead and look up a couple of minutes ago before this game started to confirm what Loner, uh, what what nationality he is. I know that you know it's a little controversial when you call someone uh, Chinese from Taiwan and Taiwan from China. So I don't want to mess that up. He is indeed a Chinese player. So he is playing for China. And uh, actually, you know, it's more of a practice game, I would imagine. It's not really for any any kind of stakes or anything like that. Obviously, these two are from the same clan, which is Prime. I believe Czech is still part of Prime. Uh, Marine King Prime and Loner Prime. So this is actually going to be on the standard map that we all know best. It is Metalopolis. And um, I guess they're not really all playing only GSL maps. I, I suppose they're still playing some of the old school maps. And Metalopolis, not a bad map. Still very standard, a lot of players still play in a lot of tournaments. And what I wanted to talk a little, a little bit more about in the last game that I didn't really get to touch base on is the fact that the new GSL maps are very, very big, in my opinion. They have huge centers, and this is a lot, uh, this is very much how the old Brood War maps were. Um, the old pro game Brood War maps used to be played on very large areas, and the reason for that is because when maps are too close, it really forces a lot of early pressure and it forces players to really not be able to scout effectively. It forces games to end earlier than they usually should. And now that the maps have, have begun to become larger and more expanded uh, with, with more expansions and huge vast areas in the center, it really makes it more of an more of a, a StarCraft style that kind of relates closely to Brood War. Now players are able to play long-term macro games easily. They're able to use their scouting information to maximum effectiveness. And it just really makes the game, in my opinion, much more interesting to watch. So I'm really glad that um, these GSL maps have started to come out. And I do believe there's a rumor going around the mill that Blizzard is planning to implement some of these GSL maps into the StarCraft 2 ladder, which I would be absolutely thrilled. I think it's been like three months and we haven't had a single update to the map pool. And you know, when you have no updates to the map pool, things can get a little stagnant. I really would love to see some new maps being introduced and I hope Blizzard can, can come around to doing that. If not the GSL maps, then maybe they can come up with some new funky maps that, um, you know, just something new. I, I haven't seen anything fresh and exciting for a while, so that would be awesome. But anyways, let's go ahead and get back to this game. Yes, if you guys haven't noticed, I am drinking Red Bull once again. It seems like a lot of players really enjoyed me drinking Red Bull in my last couple of broadcasts, so uh, I had a lot of comments of people saying, more Red Bull, more Red Bull, so I am drinking uh, a little bit more Red Bull right now, so I don't know if that's good for my long-term health, but I do know that it's awesome for my short-term broadcasts, and so we'll see uh, we'll, we'll see how this game uh, gets taken down and uh, which way... Uh, this game's gonna go. Remember that Loner lost the first game, so Loner is our red Terran in the bottom left-hand corner. It looks like he is gonna be building a bunker at his front ramp. Barracks into factory and reactor, so things are looking pretty standard here. Maybe we're gonna see a starport because he does have two gas. Over to Marine King's base, he's actually got one barracks with reactor, a second barracks going up, and what building is this? That's a factory. So I don't think we're gonna be seeing starport from Marine King, but um, no, actually, no. Yeah, yeah, we, we're not going to see Starport from Marine King. So as you guys can see, um, the Blue Terran right here just building a bunch of reactors. He's going to be focusing primarily on ground, whereas Loner is getting his Starport up. So he's going to have some early air units coming out. And uh, we're going to see what this is, what, what's going to happen here. I would imagine the Starport is going to swap with the factory. We're going to be seeing some Banshees coming out early on for Loner. And it's really going to come down to whether or not our uh, our top top player Marine King is going to be able to defend against the Banshee Harass. He really needs some Marines right now. He does have a lot of reactors. He has siege tech coming out, but I don't know if he's going to be prepared for the for the Banshees that are coming. And is there going to be cloak? That's going to be the question of the day. If there's cloak coming, then that can spell a lot of trouble for Marine King because he really only has one orbital command. He doesn't have engineering bay up yet, so he will not be able to deal with cloak Banshees very well at all. But if there's no cloak, then I think his marines should be able to handle the Banshees somewhat effectively. We're about to see, uh, it doesn't look like Loner is going to be getting cloak here. He's just really using this early Banshee to harass, and then he's going to switch down into factory mech. As you guys can see, he's got siege tech and siege tanks on the way, but Marine King here is going to be making an earlier push. Do note his siege mode is going to be finished about 
30 seconds earlier, um, and he's actually going to try to apply some pressure onto onto Loner here, and Loner's only got a single bunker to hold this off. His Banshee here is going to have to do some damage, and tr and this Banshee, its sole duty here is to try to divide the attention of, of Foxer, Marine King, and force him to pull back his forces, but I don't think Marine King is that bad of a player. I think he's going to be able to both attack and defend at the same time, although really he doesn't really have much defending his SCVs at all, so here we go. Marine King desperately running out of time. He needs something to deal with this Banshee, but he has absolutely nothing in his SCV line. He's getting pummeled right now. So really at this point, it's either all in or fall back and defend. And I really think that Marine King is thinking, you know what, I'm going to all in. But he may have hesitated too long because now Loner has Siege Mode as well. And that's going to make it that much more difficult for Marine King to break. He's actually going to run his Marines up this ramp, but there's two bunkers there, which is preventing the attack. And as you guys can see, that Banshee is still doing damage back at the, the home base of of Marine King, and that is going to have to force Marine King to GG out all the Marines here. Ouch. All of them dying. Are those little grenades that are... I think those are the helmets of... Yeah, actually, that's the helmets of every single Marine. So that's kind of a gruesome, gory sight. And <laughs> Marine King, with that, is going to leave the game. And it actually looks like back at home, he was about to kill the Banshee. But, I mean, goodness sakes, he had 17 kills on that Banshee. And so Loner really taking this game quite effectively. And easily and we're actually going to move down to the final match it is once again a best of three series so hopefully the next map is going to be on one of the new gsl maps i've been wanting to to to, to take a look at all of them so thanks a lot for tuning in guys next game coming up right after this hd signing out